Hello, welcome back. Well, now that we are finished adding and subtracting sign numbers, it won't surprise you that we are getting ready to multiply and divide them. This lesson is going to start out with what sounds like several rules, but we're going to go through them pretty quickly. And we're going to do this because I don't want you to actually remember every teeny tiny little rule. When we get down to the middle of the lesson, we'll condense all the rules together into something that's a lot easier to deal with. All right, so let's begin. When we multiply a positive number by a negative number, what do you think we should get? A positive result or a negative result? Well, let's try. Let's say that we have 4 multiplied by negative 10. And you remember that the job of multiplication is to just streamline repeated addition of the same amount. So what this really means is negative 10 plus another negative 10 plus another negative 10 and plus a fourth negative 10. If we go back to that bowl idea and we start dumping sets of 10 negatives into the bowl, this bowl will contain 40 negatives. So multiplying a positive negative by a negative, sorry, multiplying a positive number by a negative number will always give us a negative result. And of course we can check this on our calculator if we want and say what is 4 multiplied by negative 10. And it likes negative 40 also. What if we multiply a negative number by a positive number? We just sort of flip them around. Let's try an example like negative 3 times 7. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Negative 3 times 7. There are two ways that we could think of this. We could take this negative sign and reread it as the opposite of. So now we really have the opposite of 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21, and the opposite of 21 is negative 21. The other thing we could do is use that commutative property. You know that you can multiply numbers in any order. 2 times 5 is 10, 5 times 2 is 10. So negative 3 times 7 could also be written as 7 times negative 3. And we just did a positive multiplied by a negative a second ago. We know that that answer is going to be negative, and we get negative 21. So if we multiply a number that is negative by another number that is positive, we end up with a negative result. Remember, I'm really not trying to get you to memorize these rules. I just want you to see why the results are what they are. Let's slide down again. Let's try multiplying a negative number by a negative number. Perhaps we look at negative 4 multiplied by negative 5. Like we did before, let's read this first negative sign as the opposite of. So we have the opposite of 4 times negative 5. We know that 4 times negative 5 will give us negative 20. The opposite of negative 20 will give us a positive 20. It may seem a little strange that a negative times a negative is a positive, but that's the way it is. We can, of course, check on our calculator. Negative 4 multiplied by negative 5. And the calculator likes positive 20 as well. Of course, if you multiply a positive number by a positive number, I really don't have to tell you this, do you? Or do I? You've been doing this a lot all your life. Positive times a positive always gives you a positive result. Let's check and see what happens when we divide. What happens if you divide a positive number by a negative number? Let's try something like 21 divided by negative 3. 
And we really only have two choices. The answer is either 7 or it's negative 7. So let's guess. The nice thing about division is that we can check this with multiplication. If I took negative 3 and multiplied it by 7, would I end up with 21? Um, no. So 7 must be wrong. Well, how about negative 7? Take negative 3, multiply by negative 7. Do I get 21? I do, because a negative times a negative will always give me a positive. So if I divide a positive number by a negative number, I will get a negative result. Because that's what has to happen in order for the answer to check with multiplication. All right, let's move on to the next page. What happens if we divide a negative number by a positive number? Let's try something like negative 20 divided by 4. Do you think the answer is 5 or negative 5? Well, let's go with negative 5. Of course, we'll check by multiplying. Is it true that 4 times negative 5 is equal to negative 20? Yes. All right, we're good. Dividing a negative number by a positive number gives us a negative result. What happens if we divide a negative number by a negative number? Let's try negative 18 divided by negative 6. Maybe we think the answer is negative 3. The key here is, of course, to check. Is it true that negative 6 times negative 3 gives us negative 18? Uh, no, that doesn't work. Okay, this is bad. Let's get rid of that. Try again. Negative 18 divided by negative 6. I guess it must be positive 3. Negative 6 times 3 gives us negative 18. Yes. So this first one, no way. That doesn't work. All right. So what we found out was that dividing a negative by a negative gives us a positive result. And of course, you're familiar enough with division to already know that dividing a positive by a positive gives us a positive result. All right, so what are we going to get out of all this? Well, our job is to go back and look at some patterns. What happened when we multiplied or divided numbers that had different signs? So let's scroll all the way back up to the first page. We're looking for times when we use different signs. So here, we had a positive and a negative. The result was negative. Then we had a negative and a positive. The result was negative. When we moved on to division, oh, here's one. We divided a positive by a negative. The result was negative. You sensing a theme here? When we divided a negative by a positive, the result was negative. So what we really want to take away from all of this is that if you have numbers with different signs and you're multiplying or dividing, doesn't matter, the answer is always negative. Oh, I guess we should probably say down here these are two numbers. Of course, the answer is different if we're multiplying or dividing a lot of numbers in a row. So this is the same thing here, two numbers. All right, when we had a negative times a negative, we got a positive. A positive times a positive was positive. And the same thing happened when we divided. Whenever we multiplied or divided two numbers with the same sign, the result was always positive. You'll notice that the answer 
from the multiplication or division didn't change. It was just whether or not we were going to use a negative sign or a positive. All right. So here's what we want to do. Without your calculator, let's think about negative 80 divided by 10. Normally, 80 divided by 10 would be 8. The question is, should this 8 be positive or negative? We look back over here and we say these have different signs. If I'm dividing numbers with different signs, the result is negative. 7 times negative 9. Normally 7 times neg uh, sorry, normally 7 times 9 is 63. Should the 63 be positive or negative? These two have different signs. The answer should be negative. Pause the recording here and come back when you're ready. We'll check on the other four. Okay, let's see what you did. Negative 4 times negative 4. Normally 4 times 4 is 16. We look at this and see a negative times a negative. The answer should be positive. The 16 we'll leave alone. Negative 36 divided by negative 9. The signs are the same. The answer is going to be positive. 36 divided by 9 is 4. 42 divided by negative 7. The signs are different the answer will be negative. 42 divided by 7 is 6. Negative 5 times 3, the signs are different, the answer will be negative. 5 times 3 is 15. So we do the multiplication and division the same way we normally would. We just have to decide if the result is going to be positive or negative. Let's look at a couple of examples. on the next page, we have some interesting information. The resistance provided by a resistor is affected by the temperature. The change in resistance is about two tenths of an ohm per degree Celsius of temperature change. If the resistance decreased by 3.6 ohms, how did the temperature change? Okay, well, in order to work with this one, we're going to have to analyze some units. We have 0 0.2 ohms per degree and of course that's per degree Celsius. You don't want to accidentally report our answer in degrees Fahrenheit. But what we know is that this per talks about division. Somebody found this two tenths of an ohm per degree change by taking some ohms divided by some temperature. Actually, this will be change in ohms divided by a change in temperature. And let's see what we have. The resistance decreased by 3.6 ohms. So that change in ohms is negative. The change in temperature? We don't know, so let's call it x. So here's our equation. We have 0 0.2 is equal to negative 3.6 divided by x. And we know how to solve this. On the right-hand side, the 3.6 is being divided by x. So to undo the division, we multiply both sides by x. Of course, x divided by x gives us that great big one. And on the right-hand side, all we have left is negative 3.6. The left hand side, we have x multiplied by 0 0.2. We've seen this happen before. It doesn't look like we made much progress, but we really did. On the left hand side, x is being multiplied by 0 0.2. So to undo the multiplication, we need to divide. So we divide the left hand side by 0 0.2. We divide the right hand side by 0 0.2. On the left, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 gives us that big one, and x is all by itself. On the right-hand side, let's calculate that. Negative 3.6 divided by 0 0.2 gives us negative 18. All right, what does that mean? Well, let's look back at our original equation. 
this x was talking about a change in temperature. So we know that this negative sign tells us the temperature decreased by 18. And then watch your units. This is 18 degrees Celsius. OK, let's try one more. Slide all the way down here to the bottom of our page. Whoops, a little too far. The suction line connects the evaporator and the compressor. Moving from the evaporator towards the compressor, the elevation needs to decrease one inch for every 240 inches of length. To calculate pitch, we divide the change in elevation by the length. We want to find the pitch of the suction line. So let's write that down. Pitch is equal to the change in elevation divided by the length. And our change in elevation is a negative 1 because the elevation is decreasing. And those are inches. The length was 240. And those are also inches. When we divide negative 1 divided by 240, we get this nice long decimal. And we can't even keep track of it all. It's so long. Negative 0 0.00. 4166667 and stuff. All right. But they ask us to round to the nearest hundred thousandth. So let's see. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, and hundred thousandths is over here in the fifth decimal place. So we'll underline it and we'll also use this vertical bar to remind us to drop off the remaining digits. Should we round this underlined digit up? Yes. We look to the right, we see a 6. We know that this underlying digit is going to increase by 1. So what we're really talking about is about 0 .00417, and that's a negative number. You'll notice that I didn't put any units on this, because units work just like factors do. Inches divided by inches is a big old 1. All right, so the pitch of the suction line is about negative 0 0.00417. And what this is telling us is that the line slopes down. towards the compressor. That sloping down is the interpretation of our negative sign. Okay, so that's it for now. We'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.